When we need to provide a higher work output for our client, for example, scaling up the auto cycle or a diesel cycle is quite challenging. And what we can do in this case is to go back to the classical Rankine cycle and to think about generating power using a turbine. But we have noticed and identified several limitations in our Rankine cycle, including the fact that, for example, we are losing a lot of heat just to turn our liquid, saturated liquid, to saturated vapor. So now if we move away from the dome into the gas phase, therefore the increase, the, the heat addition will be converted right away into an increase in temperature and therefore the maximal temperature will be higher and therefore Carnot will be happy. So therefore we have to think about a new cycle where we are using a gas and using a turbine. And this gives birth to a new cycle, gas power cycles, and the ideal cycle for gas turbines or gas power cycles is the Brighton cycle. The Brighton cycle has more or less the same processes as the Rankine cycle, except that we are not playing on the same field, okay? Rankine is playing around the dome with change of phases, compressed liquid, superheated vapor, while the Brighton cycle is playing only in the gas phase. Before we start trying to derive the expression for the thermal efficiency of our Brighton cycle, let's see first what is a gas turbine and gas turbine power generation. Air, a lot of gaseous molecules floating all around us. It's great for breathing, and it turns out it's great for getting lights turned on. That's because air, along with abundant natural gas or other fuels, are the ingredients that combine in a gas turbine to spin the generator that produces electric current. If you follow the electricity you use at home or at work back through the power lines to your local power plant, you'll see that the process most likely starts with the work of the gas turbine the very heart of the power plant. First, air is drawn in through one end of the turbine. In the compressor section of the turbine, all those air molecules are squeezed together, similar to a bicycle pump squeezing air into a tire. As the air is squeezed, it gets hotter and the pressure increases. Next, fuel is injected into the combustor where it mixes with the hot compressed air and is burned. This is chemical energy at work. Essentially, this is what happens in your family car's engine, but at about 2,900 times more horsepower. Actually, it's exactly like the turbine engines on jet airplanes. The hot gas created from the ignited mixture moves through the turbine blades, forcing them to spin at more than 3,000 RPMs. Chemical energy has now been converted into mechanical energy. The turbine then captures energy from the expanding gas, which causes the drive shaft, which is connected to the generator, to rotate. That generator has a large magnet surrounded by coils of copper wire. When that magnet gets rotating fast, it creates a powerful magnetic field that lines up electrons around the coils and causes them to move. The rotating mechanical energy has now been converted into electrical energy because the movement of electrons through a wire is electricity. Now that we understood what is gas power cycle, so let's try to analyze it from a thermodynamic point of view. So here on the top, you will see the sketch of our Brighton cycle, and on the bottom, you will see the corresponding TS diagram. What do we have? We have four devices. We have a compressor. We have combustion chambers.
we have after this we have a gas turbine and finally we have a device actually in real life after the gas turbine you will be rejecting this to the atmosphere for the moment we will see other option and we will evaluate other option in the future in the future so but to fulfill the second law of thermodynamics for the moment we will just assume there is something called like a heat exchanger where we are ejecting our heat okay so first you see that we are using a compressor not a pump why because here we are using air okay so therefore we will have to use a compressor instead of a pump okay and the process through the compressor is isentropic from one to two then we have combustion chambers. In the combustion chambers, we are adding heat and the process will be isobaric. P is equal constant from two to three, ideally. Then we reach our maximal pressure, maximal temperature. We are ready to generate power. And this is from three to four, isentropic process, ideally. And then we close the loop from four to one using a heat exchanger and ideally, the process also will be isobaric. If you apply the first law of thermodynamics, obviously here this is the most compact form where we are neglecting the variations in kinetic energy and potential energy and we are assuming a steady state. So we can write that the work of the compressor will be equal to what? It will be equal to the difference in enthalpy, H1 minus H2, okay? And because it's an ideal gas, so the variation in enthalpy is only a function of temperature. So we can write Cp T1 minus T2. In the combustion chamber, we are providing heat. So this is Qn will be equal to H3 minus H2 or Cp T3 minus T2. Next one, the gas turbine. In the gas turbine, we are producing work. So this is the work of the turbine. It will be equal to H3 minus H4 or Cp T3 minus T4. And the last one, where we are ejecting heat, our Q out, is equal to Cp T4 minus T1. Actually, to follow the same convention here, I will be starting with T1 minus T4, and this will give me something which is negative, okay? The next step is then to use this. At the same time, remember that we can use our isentropic relations between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and the game will be to derive an expression for the thermal efficiency for a Brighton cycle.